Switch gears just a bit as the November 3rd election draws closer. We're inviting candidates to discuss their campaign for their respective races. Congressional candidate Joe Collins is running against Maxine Waters up in the 43rd district. He joins us now to share about how his campaign is going this morning. Good morning, Mr. Collins. Good morning. How are you? I am well, sir, for 720 in the morning. More importantly, how are you doing as it relates to the stretch run of the campaign? Oh, I'm doing good. I feel energized. Our campaign is going very well. Uh, we have a lot of people working for us in our three offices here across the uh, 43rd district, and it looks like we're going to pull this one off. Well, share with us the numbers or the numbers you're seeing that we're not seeing, because we looked at the primary, <laughs> we look at the fact of, of the district, yeah. and that um, Maxine Waters has been a, a fixture there for as long as I can remember. How do you dethrone the queen? Well, I think one of the biggest things are we didn't run a very strong race during a primary, so we had to reorganize the campaign, get rid of people, bring on new people. And uh, we've been rolling ever since. The biggest thing is that uh, there hasn't been anyone to run a, a strong race. A lot of people want to do it to be famous or be social media influencers. But to be able to do what we've done with the campaign as far as being visible, our back to school drives, um, our food pantries that we do four or five times a month, being visible in the community has helped us a lot. And I think that's what people want to see. They wanted to uh, vote for someone who they can identify for. We run internal surveys and polls within our um, campaign. We have surveyed over 55,000 people, and uh, they actually ag agree that it's time for Maxine to retire. Plus, I'm from South Central Los Angeles, so it makes it a tad easier. Well, your ad campaign against her very much, I think you use the same people Kim Kleisick did, had the same exact feel to it in that you point out she doesn't live in the district. She lives well outside the district. She lives higher on the hog than most of the people that, who live in the district. I think that's a fair, fair characterization, is it not, sir? Yes, absolutely. And I think people needed to see that. I mean, she she has gotten very rich. She has gotten her family very rich. And the people who still live in our communities are, are struggling every single day. So, yeah, they had to see it. It was necessary. Does that message resonate with voters? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They didn't even know she lived in a huge mansion somewhere outside the district. They actually thought that she was a resident. But, um, but the, you know, a lot of people were upset. They were ready for change. Anyway, Maxine is almost 90 years old, and uh, she has never done anything positive for our community in a, in a very long time. Talk is cheap, but people want action, and that's what we've been able to give them. You bring up the uh, subject of age. Is that not a double-edged sword for you? Because once you start pointing out people's age and, uh, and saying, hey, that perhaps their prime is past them. Don't you run into the risk of, I don't know, uh, offending people who are also a little se senior citizens who are also voters? Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, it could be a double-edged sword, but at the end of the day, every senior knows that at some point you have to retire. With Maxine Waters' age come an ineffective ability to relate to people who live in our community and relate to the way the world is moving. So saying that, you know, she's almost 90 or it's time for her to retire, uh, it, it could be, but at the end of the day, everyone knows that we just have to bring it to their attention that, you know, if we are talking about moving forward, we can't move forward with uh, Maxine Waters because she's not there anymore, um, especially because of her age being one of the biggest parts. Well, Mr. Collins, you are rounding up a little bit. I believe she's 82, but, I, the, <laughs> but the, the point is taken. You know, California is a blue state, and by all accounts, it's getting bluer. Why is that? Um, I think that the, the, the media pushes a narrative that the Republican Party uh, doesn't like them, but at the same token, the Republican Party doesn't have a huge presence in a lot of cities that, are, that, that mean something. And so when you talk about uh, who influenced you, it has to be the Democratic Party. They've been here for a very long time and they get their messages out. And I think the Republican Party needs to jump on board with conservative candidates and help us get our messages out as well. So you know what the concern is for a lot of Republican candidates is that you're going to be doing well on election night. And then when the mail-in ballots start getting counted, that's when the uh, apple cart gets overturned. Uh, do you share that same concern? No, not at all. I think what a lot of Republican candidates, they like to say in a safe space and only talk to Republicans. Me, we've been out uh, mingling with Democrats, Republicans, independents, all types of political party preferences. And, um, you know, our message is I'm going to represent you just as much as I'm going to represent everybody else. And uh, it's been a message that resonates with the people. We talk about issues that matter, education, bringing quality jobs back, um, rebuilding infrastructure, supporting small businesses and law enforcement. And this is something that we've been needed for a very long time. Mr. Collins, if you win come uh, November, it will, it, I think it will be a sign that it, it's a very good night for conservatives across the country. 
So I oh, think yeah. a lot we, of eyes will be on your election. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a great night. We're looking forward to it. All right, Mr. Joe Collins running against Maxine Waters in the Congressional District 43. COVID